I'm going to talk about how to design reinforced concrete members without the requirement of design shear reinforcement in accordance with Eurocode 2 and then I'm going to go through an example calculation how to carry out the design in accordance with Eurocode 2 and UK National Annex. First of all, the equations given in Eurocode 2 to calculate shear resistance without the requirement of design shear reinforcement are empirical. They have been derived to fit the test data. There are four main governing factors to the shear strength of a concrete section without design shear reinforcement. This would be the absolute depth of the section. So that would be this depth of the section and the strength of concrete and the amount of longitudinal reinforcement intention. If you have a scenario like this simply supported beam and if you apply a point load so the bottom or the tensile reinforcement uh, given in this cross section that's the reinforcement we are talking here and they contribute in two different ways one is direct and the other one is indirect the direct way is they are acting as doubles so that increases the shear resistance of the section and the indirect way is those bars are contributing to control the crack width and effectively supporting the shear transfer across those cracks by aggregate interlock. And the fourth governing factor is the applied axial force. This could be an external load or this could be a pre-stress force. One thing I should mention is shrinkage and temporary effects may be ignored in these calculations. And one other thing you need to bear in mind is when you apply axial tension, that would cause a reduction in previously mentioned dowel action and aggregate interlocking. If, if you take an example, if you take a 250 mil thick section and for the ease of calculations, let's say this is one meter and uh, these bars at the bottom 20 mil diameter bars at 150 millimeter centers the concrete is C4050 and gamma C is 1.5 let's assume there's an externally applied axial force, uh, compression force, which is 100 kilonewton. To take the first factor into account, which, which is the absolute depth of the section, we need to calculate K factor, which is... And this D should be in millimeter. Uh, D is the effective depth. That uh, would be this value. That's our D. So D in our example is 250. It's 190 millimeter. K would be and this would come two point zero three, which is bigger than two. Hence, our K is equal to two because of this requirement. Here. K cannot be more than two. To take the concrete strength into account, we need to calculate we mean where uh, previously calculated depth factor K is also used. V min is equal to and the UK National Annex recommends this formula only for concrete classes 
below C50, 60 should bear that in mind. And FCK here is the characteristic compressive strength of concrete and this should be in megapascal. In that case we have would be 35 and we calculated before our K which is 2 and at the beginning I mentioned our FCK is 40 megapascal and this would come to 0.626 and then we can calculate the minimum shear resistance this is the minimum value of shear resistance without design shear enforcement and that would be In this equation K1 factor would be 0.15 and this is the UK National Annex recommended value for concrete classes below C50-60. And now we need to take the axial force effect into account. Before that we need to calculate the absolute cross-sectional area which is AC. would be 2.5 times 10 to the 5 millimeter squared and our sigma CP would be ED over AC and it has to be less than 0 0.2 times FCD and again this value should be in megapascal and FCD in the previous equation I should uh, explain Sigma CP is the mean compressive stress and FCD is the design compressive strength of concrete and uh, again I should reiterate axial force should be in mega pascal FCD would be alpha CC times FCK over gamma C. Alpha CC is the coefficient taking account of long term effects on the compressive strength and of unfavorable effects resulting from the way the load is applied from UK National Annex for your code to alpha CC would be 0.85 and this is for when the section is in compression in uh, flexor and actually loading so you can calculate FCD 0.85 times 40 or 1.5 should come to 2.67 megapascal 0.2 times FCD 2.2 times 22.67 which would be 4.53 and now we can calculate sigma CP which is 100 kilonewton and this is over 2.5 times 10 to 5 and this would be 0.4 megapascal which is of course smaller than this value, smaller than 4.53. Then we need to calculate VRDC, which would be CRDC K. V 
with a minimum of So if you first calculate this value here, you can write, we've calculated our V mean before uh, as 0 0.626, K1 is 0.15, then uh, we have our Sigma CP 0.4. times BW is 1000 times 190 which is effective there to come up to 30.3 times that would be the minimum value then we need to take the longitudinal tensile reinforcement into account so if we calculate ASL it should be five times over two. Uh, as we mentioned before in our example our bars are twenty mil diameter bars and they are at hundred fifty mil centers. So dividing by 150, this would come up to 2094.4 millimeters squared. So we can calculate our rho. It should be dw times d. And this has to be below or equal to 0 0.02. And in this equation, rho is the reinforcement ratio, it would be 20, 94.4 over W is 1000, do that is 190. Rho comes to 0 0.011, which is obviously less than point. Zero 02 in accordance with UK National Annex, then we need to calculate CRDC, which is point one eight over gamma C point one eight or one point five, which would be point one two. And then we can calculate the RDC. We've written that equation before, which is this one we're going to calculate now. So we got 0 0.12 times 2 times 2 times 1000 times 190 this would come to 172.38 into 3 newton would be 172.4 kilo newton you've calculated this uh, before and that came to this value and final calculation was this and that came to 
172.4 and our capacity value should be more than 130.3 and uh, this value would be shear capacity of the section without design shear reinforcement however you need to bear in mind about the minimum shear reinforcement requirement finally this is not an important thing this particular section is not to scale that's the end of the video and that's how you can calculate the shear capacity without design shear reinforcement if you have any questions please ask comment on the video if you like the video like the video if you want to see more videos like this please do subscribe to our channel thank you